In today's video, I'll be taking you through my recent chess league game against a veteran of the Birmingham League. This game saw me sacrifice material in the opening to pursue a massive attack, ending with the sacrifice of a rook, which I'm sure bring a smile to the faces of all Gotham chess enjoyers. To put this game into context, if my team, because this is a 6v6 team format, wins the overall game, we pretty much guarantee promotion to the top division of the Birmingham League next season. So since I'm playing white, I decided I needed to win this game, and my opening definitely reflected that. A quick side note, it was also very difficult to prepare for this game because the team we were playing against, their top four boards, they shuffle around, they've been, they've been shuffling around all season, so they didn't have a consistent board two, which I was playing on. So it was very difficult to get any preparation in. Although, after e4, e6, I was expecting this from my opponent. Because I, I could find like two games of his from like 10 years ago where he played the French. So I go for b3, the Horwitz attack. b5, bishop b2, sacrificing the pawn. So I go knight c3, attacking the pawn. Knight f6, defending the pawn. And queen e2, attacking the pawn. Black has no other way to defend the pawn now. So he just goes bishop b7. My opponent is quite well known for playing very solidly. So I didn't know this before the game, but it makes sense in retrospect uh, why he just wanted to get castled quickly. But the game didn't quite pan out like that. I go g4, which the computer hates. The computer just wants me to take like this. But here, I don't like bishop f6, because I don't want to trade my dark squared bishop off. And the only way to do to prevent that is to play d4, which can be met by queen d5. Okay, chess.com. <laughs> um, which can be met by queen d5, offering a trade of queens. And after something like queen e3, bishop g5, attacking the queen... Maybe I've got to go f4, and this, th th this is, eh, I don't want to play this, right? My bishop's blocked in, my queen's a bit vulnerable, so I don't take the pawn, and I go g4, preparing g5 to attack the knight, and force it off of the defense of the pawn. Also, if g5 gets played, I control the f6 square, so black can't put a bishop on f6, and my bishop is really strong, potentially, right? I don't know what chess.com is doing today. Ignore that, please. So, he, my opponent plays knight c6, which is very principled, because he's threatening to go knight d4, attacking my queen, and attacking the c2 pawn, which forks my king and rook. So, the sample line, something like this, I have to drop my queen back to d1 to defend, and... This is a horrible position for white. Black can, well, he can't really take there because even though he deflects my queen, I get two pieces for a rook. But I'm putting my queen back on the home square, right? So I castle, defending the pawn with my king. Knight d4, queen e1. I didn't like queen e3 because of knight takes here, queen g3. And I was worried about knight back to f6. And here I did not know what to do, because taking here I thought was too dangerous, because of this. And the computer agrees with me. Knight f5, queen h3. Yeah, this is not a good position, right? I open up black's king, but black can just go queenside. So I go queen e1, so that knight takes g4 doesn't come with a tempo on the queen which gives me an extra move to take the pawn. So I'm down one pawn, okay? I've sacrificed the pawn on e4 and the pawn on g4, but I've won back black's d pawn. And my opponent plays f5. And when my opponent played this, I was really happy because in this position, I was just expecting him to castle. And sure, the g file's open. My bishop can get open in the future. I'm probably going to go f3, support the knight, attack his knight, and get my bishop to d3. But 
but my opponent plays f5. And if I move the knight, say, here, then black gets a lot of um, forward momentum, I thought. I thought black could play something like, well, not e5, actually, because I kicked the knight out, but bishop f6. And I didn't really like the position. So I was looking at f3 to support the knight and attack his knight. I I didn't really like it because once the knight moves away my knight has to move to say g3 and then this pawn is a constant weakness and I don't want to take the knight of my bishop obviously right so instead I go h3 so that the f so there's no pawn on f3 to become a weakness right my opponent plays knight f6 I was expecting knight e5, and here I wasn't sure what I was going to do, but I was just going to see what he plays. He goes knight f6, and here I go knight g5, which is the only good move really. So I put some pressure on this pawn, and my knight's pretty solid there. Black has no good discoveries. Um, he goes something like this, then... I can just attack this knight, and if takes, takes, I'm happy. If black moves the knight here, I take it. If he moves the knight here, then the knight on d4 hangs because the queen is cut off. So he doesn't really have any good discoveries. So he goes h6, which I was very happy to see because it just weakens his diagonal so much. So here I go knight 5 to f3, attacking his knight, takes takes, and I was really happy in this position. And back here, back here, I saw this sequence of moves up to here, right? And after queen d5, which is what I was expecting, attacking my knight and pinning it to the rook. From all the way back there, I saw this was a mistake. Because I can play knight e5. Brilliant move. Because he, my opponent can't take the rook because of check and a discovered attack. And here is best, best move is c6, takes, takes. And I'm up a queen for a bishop and a rook. My knight is a god on e5, and my queen's just going to get in and slaughter him, right? And when I play, I played knight e5, uh, I've got my little score sheet here. I played knight e5 with about an hour on the clock, and you start with an hour 20. And my opponent spent about 10 minutes in this position. And obviously he realised he can't take the rook. He's a strong player. I don't know why chess.com keeps doing this. Uh, and he goes bishop d7. And he told me he was just trying to... He just wanted to castle queenside, right? Which is logical. And I can't let him do that. Because if he castles queenside, my attack is gone. Now, to be fair, I can fork the rooks... I didn't think it was all that good because he is up a pawn so a minor piece and a pawn for a rook it's not that bad it, it, it really isn't for black so I go bishop c4 <sighs> I don't know why chess.com keeps doing this apologies um, so I go bishop c4 attacking the queen and putting pressure on the pawn and at this point, the queen goes to e4. And here, I find the best move in the position. Um, if you guys want to try and find the best move, then I'll give you a few seconds if you want to pause the video. So here, the best move is queen g1. It's the only move that maintains the advantage. 
because I declined the queen trade and I threatened to come into g6 with check and I threatened the g7 pawn. But more importantly, if black tries to castle, I can try to trap the queen. The queen's running out of squares. It can't retreat because of the bishop and the knight controlling it. It can't move laterally this way. It can't move down here because all the squares are controlled. Its only moves are here and here. And if the queen goes to either of them, I just take. Because f3 opens up the diagonal for my queen. And my opponent's getting mated. And even if, even if I don't take the pawn, I have knight g6. And I'm winning the bishop. Because the queen is under attack. And, well, the queen can go to d6. And, like I said, even if I don't take on a7, I can just take the rook. I'm up in exchange. So I was really happy with queen g1. And my opponent played rook g8, defending g7. I give him a check. He can't go here because it's mate. So... He has to shift to d8. And here, my opponent's down to about half an hour. I'm pretty much blitzing these moves out, and I've still got about 50 minutes. I go rook hg1, forcing the queen away, because the queen only has two squares. It's only got two squares. He goes to h4. And I thought this was quite good, because it opened up a potential defense of the bishop later on. And the queen's hard to attack there. I take the bishop, which opens up the attack on e6. He can't take with the king, because bishop takes, and I'm winning a rook. So he plays knight takes. And here I instantly play bishop takes e6. I wasn't sure whether queen takes was better. But I saw a very concrete line, which actually happened. Bishop takes, rook e8, the rook's under attack. And I knew this probably wasn't the best line, but something that I've been really thinking about recently is the fact that when you go on an, on an attack, you don't have to checkmate your opponent. You can just win material. And if I can just go up and exchange... I know I can convert this because he's, he's not playing with a rook, right? He's, he's essentially already a rook down. How is it going to get out? So I play bishop f7, attacking the rook. The rook has two moves, which, there we go. It's got two moves. Whichever one it goes to, I just take on g7. And the rook is lost. Here, um, I was expecting, what was I expecting? I was expecting rook takes f7, but it's such, th there's not really anything. I was thinking my opponent might go for some counterplay on, um, like, my weak dark squares. But I, I just have mate in so many of these lines, because the king has no escape. So my opponent plays queen f2. And when I saw this move, I was like, bro, what are you doing? <laughs> this is not the time to be taking pawns. <laughs> this, this is really not the time. You, you have a king that is about to get mated, and you want the f2 pawn? This pawn ain't getting anywhere. <laughs> like, I was so confused. And here... I channeled my inner Levy Rosman, and as you can probably guess, the move is rook takes e7, sacking the rook. If he doesn't take the rook, say, I don't know, he just plays a nothing move. I'm just up a bishop. Like, he, if he takes my bishop, I just take the rook. And what well, I'm up a rook and he's getting mated. So he has to take the rook. 
queen e6 check. Now it's important to play queen e6 check first because if you take on f8, rook takes f8, queen e6, king d8, and black is okay. Like he's he's not got a good position, but he's okay. The material is actually equal. So you need to play queen e6 check first. Now here, my opponent resigns and I win the game. But the point is, king d8 is the only move. Then you take the bishop because the rook can't take back now because the king is blocking the rook off. So after knight here, it's mate. And if he doesn't take it, say he plays a nothing move, queen e8 is still mate. And yeah, so in this position, my opponent resigns. The team overall won three and a half, two and a half to us. So we essentially guarantee promotion. And I get two brilliant moves in this game. And if I can show you, let me see if I can show you this. Okay, yeah. So here, the game review, I got 96.2 accuracy to my opponent 77. With two brilliant moves. So that was the 95 sacking, sacking the rook. And rook takes e7 sacking the rook. Um, I had one miss the whole game, which was g4, because the computer just wanted me to take here, which I explained why I didn't. And all the others were pretty perfect. Like, that was a near-perfect attacking game, that, which I'm so happy with. So, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and learned something. Um, if you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe. And if you've got any mates that are into chess, share the video to them. And, um, yeah, have a good one.